Morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Casey. Spent a few, uh, a half hour of every week talking about what's going on in the real estate market. First of all, well, before I get going, I, I just got to have a shout out. Um, you know, Donnie um, Sampson is taking over for Danny at Sampson Properties. And I will just tell you that that place is running like a top. I mean, that is really an impressive organization he's built over there. The Cardinal Title Group, as good as they can get. I mean, he put things in there for the agents and sellers that you just can't beat. Uh, First Heritage, awesome. But I will tell you that I had the experience this week of talking to all the agents at SAMHSA at the, at the office meeting. So I, I worked with one of the marketing people. Phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Everyone you meet over there is... Uh, is really, really top notch. And I think Donnie has uh, shown some leadership with Sarah and, and just assembled the team. So if you're an agent, I know there are some agents out here that listen to this, this show, you might want to give Donnie a call because I'm telling you, that's a pretty tight organization he's got over there right now. I have nothing that, you know, not my deal. I just, I just run the Casey Sampson team. You know, I get focused on what's going on, but, um, but I will say really proud of Donnie, uh, his whole staff, everybody's doing a great job. You want to look into that. All right, let's talk about, you know, what we want to do today. And that is, you want to protect your friends, family, and, and even your neighbors, okay? And, and the reason for that is, you want to protect your friends and family uh, for love. You want to protect your um, business associates for uh, friends. You want to protect your neighbors, because if they screw up, your house goes down in value, right? So, if, an, if a neighbor puts his house on for 1.5 million and it's worth 1.5, but he might be able to get 1.57, that's good for you. But if he puts it on at 1.6 and it goes down to 1.5 and it drops to 1.45 and it sells under market value because it wasn't handled correctly, that brings the value down for you, right? So you want to make sure that if you've had experience with us, you know the team, you know the track record, if you listen to this show, you want them to make sure they get top dollar for their house in the quickest amount of time that benefits you. As far as your family is concerned, who wants a mother and a father to suffer when they're, you know, trying to sell something in Dallas, Texas, or in, in Houston or in New York. D don't have that happen. We, you know, we're lucky enough, lucky enough to be the number one team in the state of Virginia. We're one call to the number one team in any community around the country. This is a network of Real Trends and Wall Street Journal, top producers. And, and the reason why I want to put them with a medium team is, you know, medium teams uh, are less than 10 people. So they're all top producers. If they're doing $150 million, and they've only got 10 people, trust me, everybody on that team is a badass. So the principal is involved in every transaction. He's got just top producers, but they're big enough to have critical mass that they can afford the top marketing people like we have Julie, communication people like we have Michelle, operations people like we have Sharon. So so you want to have big enough volume to afford all these luxuries that really make the world good for our sellers, but not too big where we lose control and my sellers aren't meeting with, you know, somebody that's done four deals this year. All right. So everybody's done 20, 30, 40 million dollars. You know, they meet with me, everybody meets with me. I price every house. That's medium team. So if you have somebody down in Naples, Florida, that's trying to sell something and hasn't been able to sell it, we can find the number one medium team in that area. Now, we still get involved in pricing, even if it's in Naples. I'll interview two. I want to know how they arrived at their price, what their thought process was, how they're doing the micro and the macro. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. How they, they look at the micro and the macro, what the market conditions are currently. Um, you know, it's funny. I was I went to uh, MLS and I looked at market trends, and this is what a lot of realtors rely on, right? So these are August numbers. These are August numbers on decisions that were made in June and July, right? We need to know what's happening today, not not like like today. Like when I go to a listing appointment, I run the market for today, because two weeks ago I wouldn't give you two nickels for this market because. In Vienna, for every 20 homes listed, only one went under contract, right? Well, now it's it's up to 22%, right? So now we've got a couple. It's a, what I would call a rally. So in the last week and a half, we started to rally, okay? 
which gives me a little more confidence when we're pricing and putting houses on the market. But this is the kind of, of thought process we want to go with before we turn your parents or your kids or somebody else over to an agent that's working in Dallas, Texas, or in Denver, Colorado, or wherever. We can get very micro on that too. So we want to hit just the market that they're the number one uh, medium team on. So anyways, real trends is just once you become one of their top teams, then you get access to a lot of information and, uh, and a lot of connections. So please, if you listen to the show, protect your friends, protect your family, protect your neighbors, protect your business associates, just have them send, you know, send me over their information. I'll get them in touch with the right person and we'll make sure that it's priced correctly and they go through the market. This is no market to mess around with. And I'm going to show you why here in a second when we go to the macro. Um, you know, we want to be very thoughtful in how we do things. And, you know, let me let me talk about that. And Donnie, Donnie said something in the meeting yesterday when I was working with him. You know, this is all about partnering with the other agents. So Samson Properties, instead of like me holding all my information, nobody knows about it. We all get together. We have masterminds. So I can tell you who's the best person in Ashburn, who's the best person in Leesburg, who, you know, who are the top producers and then learn from them and figure out what they're doing and how they're doing it. And, you know, how they arrive at their numbers as we arrive at our numbers. So very, very powerful. We get to know all of these agents. So if I had somebody in, in Leesburg, probably not going to take that hand. I'm going to probably hand that over to an agent that I know is incredible over there. I'm still going to price the house. I'm still going to make sure it's priced correctly, but they're the most efficient agents that can bring in that market intel that we need, okay? So, so please, I'm, you're gonna hear me say this a lot, and the reason for it is because people that make bad decisions in real estate lose, and I don't mean they lose like 5,000 or $10,000, I mean they lose $100,000 or $200,000. The difference between listing at 1.5 and selling at 1.5, or putting it on too high and letting it go down, down, down to 1.45. It's $100,000, $125,000 between doing it right and doing it wrong. And again, two weeks ago, only 5% of the people were doing it right. Now, at least it's about 20%. So, so let's be thoughtful. So this was kind of what we put together for yesterday's thing. I'm going to whip through it real quick for everybody. There's three ways that we want to get to the correct price. This is exactly what I'm talking with agents in other areas about. I want to know what their three ways are of doing it. There's the micro, okay? And the micro means what's the current market within one mile of this house, similar price range, similar age, similar size, you know, all the similarities. And, and let me point you to a couple of numbers here. So I'm pricing this house right here. And this just this is going active today, by the way. So so if we look at it, the homes that sold were at 123% of the assessed value. So that tells me they were selling a pretty strong amount over the assessment, right? 321,000. But look at the under contracts. Remember how I said that you gotta be current. You can't, you can't think about three months ago or four months ago, you have to be current. And I don't mean current within 30 days. I mean current within like the last 20 days, 10 days, seven days. So everybody going under contract is at 110. There's a lot of people that may be active or withdrawn, right, at 115. So it's kind of telling a story when you look at these numbers where we want to be. Now, I'm going to show you this in a second, how we, how we test it. But this is the micro. This is looking exactly around this neighborhood at this price, comparing square footage, blah, 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 blah. We tested 1.9, it did not test well. We moved it to 1.85. So look at the difference. See how the actives and everything were at 1.5? We tested that number, it didn't work. We're right about there right now, right? So that's where it's gonna get launched. So when we talk about, you know, a real estate market, oh, are things selling, are they not selling? No, they're selling. You just have to be very accurate of how you do this. So first we're looking at the micro and we're looking at the neighbors. The sphere of influence or the, the focus that the, the sellers have, their, their world that they can deal with uh, comps is basically restricted to their neighborhood and their neighbors and how much they sold for. So we have to be able to compare to the neighbor. And even though it was done, they sold it two years ago, I appreciate it. 
I can have it appreciated until today's numbers based on what the rest of the market is doing. So I don't worry about that. So we can do very micro and the neighborhood and then come to some conclusion. Then we have to look at the macro, right? This is the macro. Now, this is, this is something that every seller really needs to understand. So this is called the affordability index. This is what the home price versus the median income, okay? Now, look at 2007, how it jolted up, okay? There's the bubble. There's what happened after it got to that peak, okay? So now the affordability index is all the way up here again, and it's been caused by the spike in interest rates, which have a lot to do with it. But nonetheless, the amount of people that could afford a house right? If you look at NDAR, was 125% of the people could afford the median house. Now only 69% can afford the median house. So that tells you that the market is going to start receding. It has begun receding. The reason I do coffee with Casey is I need to catch it every week. Uh, this morning, my wife says, Carol goes, why don't you just do it every other week, right? Well, that's old news. I mean, every week, you've got to examine what's going on in the market. I examine it every week. So we're right here about now, we've slipped down between six and 10% from where we were at the peak. And I'll be honest with you, when I talk to sellers, they want, uh, let's give you a perfect example. You know, one seller um, thinks it should be worth one five and it was worth one five, but that was about a year ago. And now we've slipped down into the one fours. So, so we need to be cognizant of where we are in the overall picture. So one question a lot of sellers have, should I wait? Should I just wait? Should I not sell now and hang on to it? Well, would you rather have sold here or here, right? Or here. So this is, this is 2007, it's about 214. So that's a seven year hold. And it doesn't get much better up in here. So there's a 10-year hold or a 14-year hold. So it really didn't reach that peak again for another 14 years. So the whole time to get the price that it's worth today is about 13 to 14 years. So if you have, again, protect your friends, protect your family, protect your neighbors and your business associates. If the thought is, should I sell? The answer is yes. The answer is absolutely yes. Be smart, but sell or go out on top. So who sells today? Death, divorce causes sales, downsizing causes sales. People that are saying, I've got a big house. I just like to cash out, go buy a place somewhere. My recommendation is sell when they yell, which is up in here. Buy when they cry, which is down in here. So, so you can sell now. Nobody says you have to buy anything. You know, relax. Just just date the area you want to live in for a year or two before you make a de de uh, decision to purchase. By that time, prices have receded a little bit, interest rates have come down, then you have a much better market. Now you're in a recession, now go ahead and buy away, okay? So know where we are on the cycle of now's the time to sell, now's the time to get rid. So let me ask you this, was well, it a bad time to buy? Is it a bad time to buy? The answer is no. And let me tell you why. I know this is kind of weird to say it's a good time for sellers and buyers. Here's why. Well, if I'm a buyer and 19 out of 20 people overpriced their house or did a poor job, they're going to start coming down in the spiral of, of death is what we call the pricing. So more homes are withdrawing than selling, right? Well, that means that a lot of sellers know they made a mistake. It's coming down. And now you can buy a house at a great deal. So when we go in and buy houses, we will calculate what the house is worth, maybe a little bit less, and we'll go in and that's what our offer is, letting the sellers know, hey, prices are gonna be going down. We're not gonna overpay for this house. So is this a great time to negotiate a house? The answer is yes. Let me tell you another reason. You never know where the bottom is. If interest rates go down, prices will probably flatten out, right? This will, this will come down by itself when interest rates come down. So, so it's not a bad, the prices aren't bad. It's the interest rates that's bad. So now's a good time to find a deal, get your family into a house, which you couldn't do in many markets because you're getting bid out. No more bidding. All right, that's a lie. I'm going to tell you why. 
For most houses, there's no more bidding. For most, for 19 out of 20. So I'm going to go through this and I'm going to tell you how there are still multiple contracts flying around here and the market is still strong if you can find it, okay? All right, so as far as the macro is concerned, by the way, I like, like the way she did all this. This is Heather's handiwork. She did just such a wonderful job. The other thing we look at when we talk about the macro is, let's just take Arlington, right? Well, how many, and I had a condo in Arlington. So I said, well, what does the, what does the market look like in all of Arlington for houses or condos of this size and age? Look at all of them. These are all the actives, only two went under contract, right? So you have an 11% success rate. Is that the time when you want to get aggressive with pricing or conservative with pricing? Conservative. So what does the overall massive market look like as far as affordability index? And then what does your whole town look like when you're talking about this type of property? And that's the macro look. So you have the micro, getting very specific. You have the macro, which is what does the whole town look like at this time? And what does the whole market, what's the affordability index at this time? And where house is going down? So then you arrive at, we need to be more conservative, not, not more aggressive, okay? So then we go to phase three. And this is where, this is why um, our team, 100% of our houses are still going under contract on the first weekend. And yes, we did have nine contracts on one house. And relatively speaking, it was the most expensive house in the area that we were selling, not, not a le less expensive. So, so let's go to the, the last phase, the phase three is in testing the price, right? So I can go in here and I hit this hit counter and that'll tell me how big is my buyer pool, how many people love it, like it, possibilities, all the agent's name, all the agent's numbers. So I can get a read on are we in the right place or are we not in the right place? So if you go back to Ballycore, test it out at 1.9. So we put it on at 1.9. Anybody coming, how big is the buyer pool? 90. One person favoring it. Okay, drop it to 1.85. Okay, there's the buyer pool. And now we have a lot of people interested and now showings are beginning. So this is how, and, and Ballycore is launching today. So let's, let's talk about it next week. We'll see how that goes next week. But this gives me a great solid indication of are we at the right number to attract the biggest buyer pool because we want we want multiple contracts. So we look at this, and this is this is our showing time. So on Wednesday, before I talk to my sellers, and I'm talking to one today at eleven o'clock. I mean, at uh, one o'clock, I have to know the showing time. How many people are coming to see your house? With all of this macro, micro, everything we're doing, is anybody coming to see your house? If the answer is no, we've got to go down on the price. We've got to move before the market tells us to. We've got to move. This is the market talking to you. Nobody's coming. Then move it down. So this freeze land that you look at here, this is in Linden. Anybody ever heard of Linden? I haven't heard of Linden. I didn't know where Linden was. You know? So we went out and... You know, one of our sphere of influence clients was out there. Husband had passed away. Again, death, divorce, and, and downsizing. Husband had passed away. So we have to price a house out there. Now, 750 to 800 is in the nosebleed section, right? But my models say that this is about a $750,000 property. So we test 800, which is what the seller wanted, or the, 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 uh, the heirs wanted. So we tested 800, nobody was there. Nobody was coming, there's no showing. You know, the buyer pool was small at 800,000. We moved to 750. We moved to 750, we got our 30 showings. We had nine contracts and it sold for, and nobody in Linden listens to this broadcast. So I will tell you that it sold for $830,000. So remember we tested 800, didn't work, nobody coming. We went to 750. Got found the buyer pool, then everybody got in the house, they loved it, they bid on it, and it went up to 830. It went up to 830, settling all cash in 12 days. So don't even tell me, well, that's Vienna, that's a different market. No, we just did it in Linden. And again, probably if you took away my GPS, I couldn't find Linden again. I mean, it's out there somewhere, it's in the mountains. So 
So that's the three things that we look at. And when I'm talking to an agent from, I mean, geez, whether it's from Montgomery County, Maryland, or uh, Denver, Colorado, or Wyzetta, Wisconsin, uh, Wyzetta is in Minnesota. Those are the cake eaters from Wyzetta. So if I'm talking to a cake eater from Wyzetta, uh, Minnesota, I want to know, how do you arrive at your numbers? Where is your number? How do you do it? And, and I will help. I mean, I'm right in there. I want to make sure that if a Northern Virginia person that tells me, one of my sellers, my parents need to sell their house out there, I'm going to make sure that that gets priced correctly. I'm also going to make sure it goes on for seven days and that the client or the agent can tell me, do you have 10, 15 people coming to see that house when we turn this thing on? Because when we go to launch, you can only launch one time. I need to know somebody's coming in that house. If you trust me to find somebody in um, anywhere, Marin County, um, that agent's answering to me, right? Um, or one of my one of my agents. You know, if I'm if I can't get to it, somebody else will. But we all know how to price houses. They watch me do hundreds of them a year. So again. Do not allow your friends, family, neighbors, or business associates to make mistakes. Just go ahead and, and have them give us a call, and we'll put them in touch with the right person around the country and get that done. If you're an agent or anyone that wants to get something done in Northern Virginia, a lot of the markets we work in, we'll handle it. If I can't, I'll send it to Jose Ruiz, Ruiz uh, who is the expert in the market down near. Um, um, it's it's down near Fredericksburg and, and that area down there. Um, I'm trying to think of the the down by Potomac Mills Mall. But my point is that the great thing about Samson Properties is that we're not we're not like this. I mean, everybody's like that. I mean, who can handle this? Take a referral and move them to that person. Now, for our referral, we make sure that we price it correctly. Because we don't want you, we're not just going to pass it to any old person and let him do it. My reputation's on this on the line if I say that that's the agent. And I will be honest with you, it's not always the number one. I've interviewed number ones and I don't like them. I think they go on reputation and they don't know, they aren't really great at pricing houses and not my deal. I don't want somebody that's philosophy is to leave a house on the market for a long time and let's see what we get. That's not the philosophy. Our philosophy, as all of you know, is when it goes on the market, we get the best deals in the first week. We need to make sure that we do our micro, our macro, and our test to make sure that when we launch it, and the only reason I can talk to certainty that this is the way to go, if all our houses are selling in a market where only 5 or 10% of them are going under contract the first weekend, but all of ours do, then that's the way to do it. Whether you're a new agent, whether you're an experienced agent, if you're not doing a predictive analysis, <clears throat> you're making a huge mistake. So today we've talked about protecting your sphere of influence, protecting your family, your friends, your neighbors, your business associates. We've talked about how we want to make sure that we get that house correctly priced when it's in there, which is look at the macro, look at the micro, and, uh, and then do the test, okay? And for those of you that are sitting there thinking, well, maybe it's time to downsize, it's time to downsize, okay? It's time to sell the big house, sell the, sell the big ranchero, and, and go find some place and start dating Florida or dating South Carolina or dating Texas. Where are your grandkids? That's usually where everybody ends up. I'm going to go to, you know, somebody says, um, I'm going to Iowa. Well, who, who, who retires in Iowa, you know? Well, that's where the grandkids are. So... You know, as soon as they say, say, where are you going? They tell me where they're going. I was like, all right, well, enjoy the grandkids. Because I'm sure that's one of the few reasons why people go to. Two coaches on my football team, both from Iowa. So I won't say anything bad about Iowa. Let me pick on Indiana or something like that. But I'm just saying, they go to a place that's not a resort place that people retire to. There's grandkids involved. My name is Casey Sampson. And you've been listening to Coffee with Casey. Today, if you want to reach me, I'm at 703-508-2535, or you can send me an email at casey at caseysampson.com. 
thanks for listening. I really, you know, I, I really want to go to our Samson meetings. I get a lot of agents talk to me about reciting some of the things we say here, which I really, really appreciate. But really, when it all comes down to it, we're trying to make sure that the Samson clients get taken very well care of. I don't care if it's my deal or your deal. We're trying to make sure that our agents are educated. Our agents are not the kind of person that throws a house on the market for 100 days and let it sit and rot. We want to make sure we do it right. That's what medium teams do. My name is, again, Casey Sampson, 703-508-2535. We'll see you all again next week on Coffee with Casey. Bye now.